welcome back um, everyone after the break um, and thank you for joining us again for our second session this morning. Um, as you've seen in that previous set of videos, we've got quite a lot of interesting information about baubles, different materials, how they break. Um, and now um, I'm delighted to be joined by one of our fantastic Discover Materials ambassadors, um, Dan Scottskin, Scottson, sorry, who's a material scientist at the University of Manchester, who's going to talk to us this morning about saving the bauble delivery service. Um, so Dan, if I can pass straight over to you, um, welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. Hi everyone. Uh... So welcome to a little presentation on saving the bauble delivery service with me, Dan Scottson, and I'm a material scientist here at the University of Manchester. So what is the bauble delivery service? Well, we work off three principles in, in essence, depot, delivery and decorate. So we have a load of baubles. Um, we at the depot need to pack these in, in boxes and we deliver these across the country. And then the hope is that we can uh, decorate either some trees or houses or, or whatever. So let's get started. We've got a call. Hmm. Another order of baubles are needed. Right, hmm, okay. So what do, what do we have at this depot? Well, we have a selection of different boxes, only one type. 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. It's a cube box. So unlike a typical depot where you might have long boxes, short boxes, etc., we just have 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. Near at the bauble delivery service, we have a selection of baubles as well. So we have large baubles, medium-sized baubles, and also uh, the smallest size bauble. And each bauble has an associated cost. And here at the bauble delivery service, we work in our currency of stars. So the biggest bauble, 100 stars. The medium-sized bauble, 12 stars, 50. And our smallest bauble, 1 star, 56. So how big are these baubles? Well, the biggest bauble is 20 centimetres in size. The uh, medium-sized bauble, 10 centimetres in size. And our smallest bauble is five centimetres in size. So your task is to maximise the value of baubles we can fit at the bauble delivery service in one of these boxes. So as some a potential hint for you, remember the volume of a cube, the dimension cubed, and remember the volume of a sphere is something like four uh, divided by three, multiplied by pi, multiplied by the radius cubed. So you've got two minutes to think about how we might maximize that value of baubles in our box. So three, two, one, off we go. So we've got two minutes to think about this. So I put the value of the baubles there. So we've got the largest bauble, we uh, so 100 stars there, that's 20 centimetres in diameter. We've got a medium sized bauble, that is 10 centimetres there, that's the yellow one, that's 12 stars, 50. And we've also got that smallest bauble there, that's five centimetres in diameter, the red one, and that is one star, 56. Now remember, volume of that box, Got three dimensions there, 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. We're looking to maximise the volume, to maximise the number of baubles we might fit in the box or maximise the value of the baubles. Think about how many baubles you might fit in. You choose to go for a large bauble and you fit lots of them in. If, if you can go for the smallest bauble, can you fit lots of them in? That's, that's the dilemma here. Now remember, thinking about your strategy you might have here, do we focus on the big baubles, do we focus on the small baubles? We've got about 30 seconds remaining, so keep on, uh, keep on thinking.
Okay, so coming into the, the closing stages now, we'll call it 15 seconds from here, okay? So into countdown time, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So that is indeed time's up. Okie dokie. So what do we do? Well, let's just recap a little moment. So we've got the volume of our box. 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. And remember, we've got baubles of different sizes, 20 centimetres in diameter, 10 centimetres in diameter, and 5 centimetres in diameter. So what's maybe the simplest approach? Well, it might look something a bit like this. So we've got uh, the boxes there with different sized baubles in them. And here, what we've done is for the largest bauble, well, that was 20 centimeters in uh, diameter. So you can only actually fit one bauble in that box. Now, for those medium sized baubles and the, the smallest uh, ones, we can think about maybe arranging those in columns and rows of baubles. So for the yellow baubles there, we've got uh, two by two in that in that middle image. And then on our in our third box, we've got uh, four by four. Now remember, boxes are in three dimensions. So we need to think about um, how, how this plays out. So if we've got our one bauble, that just looks like a single bauble, a bit boring. Now remember, we've got two by two shown in the image there, but in, in practice, we have both two there on that face and then two on the other face too. So remember that then gives you eight uh, baubles in total in our box. And then if we're thinking about our, um, our other one, well, the image I showed you was just 16 baubles, something like that. But remember, we've got a third dimension as well. So we've got we've got four by four, and then in our other dimension, we've also got four. So we need to do four times four times four, and that gives us sixty-four baubles. So biggest bauble one, the small, uh, the medium-sized baubles. Therefore, we've got eight baubles in the box, and the smallest bauble, sixty-four in total. Okay. So let's think about how many, uh, the value of uh, stars then we've got of each bauble. The biggest, 100 stars, multiplied by one, 100 stars, okay? Then the medium-sized bauble, that was 12 stars, 50 per bauble. So if you multiply that, that, that eight that by eight, that's also 100 stars. And then the smallest bauble, one star, 56, multiplied by 64, remember, four times four times four, that gives us 99 stars, 84. Okay, so pretty much all the same. Okay, ah, what's this? Ah, another call. Oh dear, what do they want? Uh, well, we just had another call, and for this Christmas tree, they want a number and a lot of baubles. And they've told us that we need actually 1,200 stars worth of baubles. But here at the bauble delivery service, we've got a bit of a problem. The van can only fit in 10 boxes because we're doing other deliveries as well. So we can only fit in 10 boxes in the van. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we need 120 stars per box. Hmm. OK, so what we said previously was that if we arrange the baubles in columns and rows, we got about 100 stars with each configuration there. Hmm. But we need 120. So we need 20 more stars worth of baubles. So how are we going to do it? Well, our solution. Let's have a chat with a friend with a material science background. OK. Now, what do they tell us? Well, they give us a top tip. And this top tip is to think about different packing arrangements. So. What, what do we mean by a different packing arrangement? Well, previously we thought about uh, putting baubles in both columns and rows. So in that scenario, we fitted in 
four by four. And then in that third dimension, another four. So we thought fitted in 64 baubles in total. Now, do we really need to just put the baubles in rows and columns? Well, the answer is no. We can arrange them slightly differently. So actually, if we arrange them a bit like this, whereby now we have five columns and kind of four rows of baubles, we can actually, rather than fitting 16 in that cross section, we can fit in 20. So if we think from previously, if we had the four by four in the row and the column, we had one star 56 multiplied by 64, that gave us 99 stars 84. Now with our new arrangement, We can fit in one star, 56, multiplied by 20. That's what you can see. But so that would give us on that, on our cross section there, something a bit like this. We would see 31 stars, 20. Now, if we also assume that we that we pack uh, with four baubles into the, uh, into the page, we can then get 20 on our face, multiply by four. In total, we can get 80 baubles. So if we do that calculation, 80 multiplied by one star 56, we get to 124 stars 80. So there, if you multiply 31 stars 20 by four, we get to 124 stars 80. Very good. But we made a bit of an assumption there. And do we really need to just have four in the third dimension? Because for the bauble delivery service, we've done it. We've got over 120 stars um, that we needed for our delivery. But can we do even better? Well, the answer actually is we can. Because when we think about three dimensions, we can think about a number of different arrangements for these spheres. So in three dimensions, we've got a number of different possibilities. Now, from before, we had something very simple like this, where we have columns and rows. Something like this is very simple structure. In material science, we think of different arrangements of spheres are called structures. These can be atoms or indeed particles themselves. So here we've got uh, simple cubic type structure, where here we've just got the rows and columns. Now we can also think of doing more intricate things. So if we've got our four here, and then we've got a smaller one of three, what we can do is we can pack these differently. So we can layer these up. Let me just layer them up for you. So we can do something like this. So when we layer them up, so all I've done here is I've layered our three by three with a four by four. We put those in the middle, such as like that, and then we can build it out. And what you might notice, if I show these to the camera, we've got this one to start with, but this one is where we pack slightly more efficiently. And you'll see with the difference in our height there, we've actually got um, a tighter packing when we pack like that. And that is like our body centered cubic type packing. So that's described uh, here. So that's in that top uh, right of the image there. Now, we've also got a different type of structure. And this one is looks a bit like this, a slightly different way of arranging it. This is our face centered cubic structure. So that's one that appears in the middle. Now for this, we can think of if we've got um, five spheres arranged like this, and then we put four spheres on top of it. We put those on like that. And then we come back with another set of five, and we arrange them like so. We then get our face-centered cubic structure. This is just different ways of arranging spheres in different structures. So for the hexagonal close packed system, so this is uh, like a hexagon. So if we arrange our baubles like this in a hexagon, 
And then we take three of them like this as well. We place these on top. There. And then place another three on top. Place another three on top. We get something that looks more like this. And that is like our hexagonal place pack structure. So we have lots of different structures that we can um, get. Simple cubic, body-centered cubic, face-centered cubic, hexagonal close pack. And these are all different types of arranging spheres, or in this case, baubles, into different 3D arrangements. Now, you might be thinking, we're just thinking about the same size of bauble so far. So, yes, indeed, you can do some other clever things. You can think about how you might put different baubles um, sizes together. So the big bauble took up all the space. And in that case, we couldn't fit anything else in it. But if we have our different size bauble, such as the medium size bauble, that yellow one, and then the red size bauble, the red size bauble will fit in the gap between those medium size baubles. Now, in material science, we call this an interstitial site. But basically, it allows us to pack our baubles more densely. And there on the right hand side, we've again got our different uh, arrangements of our baubles. So we saved the bauble delivery service. We got over our 120 baubles uh, per box. And you may want to think about, with a bit more time, how you might maximize this further, both with the three dimensional uh, arrangements and also with the uh, different sizes. But we thought about here different structures of 3D spheres, but we've also thought a little bit about gaps in materials, because here we're trying to pack baubles nice and tightly, but also this means we have some gaps in them. And how do gaps in materials affect what they do? Well, as material scientists, we're always interested in applications of materials. So we need to think about why spaces or gaps might be important. So two applications for you here. On the left-hand side, we've got a sponge. Now, you might be familiar with this. Um, very easy to squash and squeeze. And that's because we've got lots of uh, gaps in the sponge. And this allows us to have a high surface area. So that's perfect for absorbing liquid, such as water. But it also, by having a high surface area, we can, it's very useful for something like catalysts. So that is allowing us uh, to do chemical reactions much faster. And then with a high surface area, it can also be used very effectively for filtration too. Now, the right hand side is a bit closer uh, to home for me. This is what I'm working on at the moment. Gaps and spaces are very important in ceramic materials. Now, ceramics, a bit like the mug that you've got at home, something like this, you might be familiar with, or a, or a toilet seat or plates or cutlery. These are quite boring, mundane ceramics. But what I work on, we work on ceramics for jet engines. And these are the things that you see on aeroplanes that use uh, um, used in flight to get you from A to B. And the ceramic materials here are extremely thin. They're about the thickness of your hair and they need to survive some very high temperatures, typically above 1,200 degrees. So a little bit hotter than your oven at home. And these ceramic materials need to be excellent thermal insulators to, uh, to avoid um, to protect that underlying material that these ceramic coatings are on. So that's a little bit of background why spaces or gaps might be important. But let's have a think about what we've uh, covered in this session. So we posed a problem regarding bauble packing. So how might we arrange different baubles into with different arrangements? But if we thought about it in 2D, two dimensions, and also 3D, three dimensions. We thought about some consequences of packing on materials, particularly um, 
those coating, those ceramic coating materials, but you also think about gaps in materials for something like the sponge. But I suppose most importantly, we indeed save the bauble delivery service um, from their trouble this winter. So with that, thanks very much uh, for your attention. And maybe this coming winter, you'll see baubles differently. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Dan, so much for sharing that with us. I was just imagining what a 20 centimetre bauble looked like. That's going to be quite a big bauble to, to be hanging on a tree. There's not many trees that can support a bauble that size. Um, but really interesting that I because mean, I was thinking, obviously, uh, material science, you can't really cut baubles up to fit in the corners of the box that you have there. Um, so in materials, you know, we, we often fit like parts of of, of, of bits together so it's really interesting to see if you're fitting whole items in a box that you can't really think about cutting a bauble into quarters um unless uh who you're delivering to are happy to stick it back together at the other end um but it's really interesting i feel like obviously you've applied this to baubles but um a lot of deliveries a lot of parcels aren't packed that efficiently in boxes um, and this is actually a really um, interesting idea about how we can fit things um, into boxes. So I've had deliveries recently where I've opened it up and I think, well, this is half paper. Uh, what was the point in a box this size being delivered? So this is really interesting from a material side, but also from businesses being more efficient, thinking about sustainability and how many things we can fit in a box. Um, there are so many different applications for, for this type this type of project and you're talking about aeroplanes um obviously they want to fit as as much in an aeroplane as possible so if the bauble delivery service uh starts some international deliveries i think there'll be there'll be a lot more work to do there as well um so thank you very much dan um for introducing us to the bauble delivery service um and how you have saved their and their customers christmas <laughs>